So I was hoping that you couldn't see my face, but I think you can still see my face, so maybe I'll just wear my hoodie. Welcome to my late night chat video. It is currently 3 o'clock where I'm at on a Friday. And as usual, I am bored with no friends to hang out with. And since I don't know who's up, who out of the few friends I do have or family members I do have, my uncle just called me, but he posted a Facebook status earlier about, I hope he doesn't watch this video, about him and his girlfriend getting into some drama. So I thinking that's probably why he's calling me and I don't want to get involved so that's not an option but I just want to talk but I don't I, I don't want anyone to talk back to me and I think that's why I'm here on YouTube I was just watching a video or listening to a video about Janet Lee the actress. I was watching a documentary about her. I don't know why. I'm like really drawn and fascinated to old Hollywood starlets and stars, males as well. Tony Curtis, as well as a good actor, but nonetheless. So this is my late night chat video about some of the late night thoughts I'm having because I have no one to tell my thoughts to. Well, I have people to tell my thoughts to, but I'd rather talk to someone who can't talk back to me. Like I said, I mean, you guys can talk back to me in the comments, but it's not like it's not an immediate response. So not that it's a bad thing to talk to someone one-on-one -on -one and like get that immediate response but sometimes I think I just need to get my thoughts out because I'm a Mercury and Sagittarius so I have a lot of them but I'm also Moon and Libra so I like to talk my feelings out if I'm not talking to like someone on the phone or if I'm not talking to the camera I'm mostly talking to, talking to myself which sometimes is cool but it just isn't as fun so Late night thoughts, late night thoughts. Okay, so it's a sad, it's a Friday, and, I, you know, it's another Friday board. You know, I don't really have a lot of friends, and that is one thing I want to talk about is friends. And friends as you get older, and making friends and keeping friends. I'm not the best at keeping friends friends it's pretty easy for me to make friends if i really want to but i'm not the best at keeping them because i'm not the best at keeping in touch with people that's my main issue like i've been saying for months now that i want to go visit my grandma but i never get around to visiting my grandma not that my grandma's my friend but like i like hanging out with my grandma like i would like hanging out with my friend you know so it's just an example but I'm not the best at keeping up with people. I tend to be in my own bubble, and so I know part of that is my fault of why I sometimes get lonely. You know, I tend to be in my own bubble, and it gets hard for me to break out of my bubble, my YouTube psychic bubble. These are the thoughts of a psychic tarot reader, I guess. These are the thoughts of me. I don't know. An astrologer as well. And, you know, I'm also a Capricorn sun. While I do have this very chatterbox energy, I am also have a lot of earthy, reclusive energy as well. I'm a Capricorn sun, Virgo rising. So when I'm alone, I like to make productive use of my time. Like, you know, I like to pump out YouTube videos, you know, think of content, do personal readings for you, for you all. By the way, I'm available for personal readings. So if you want one, LamarTownsandTarot.com is my website. You can also call me or text me at 703-791-9162. You know the drill by now. All right, but a link to my website should be in the comment section of this video, by the way. And it's interesting. I took a melatonin earlier, and it's like I didn't even take it. Like, it passed right through me. I must have peed it out or something because I, at no point after I took that melatonin, did I feel tired. Maybe for a moment, but I thought it was just because I, I ate some food. You know, you get the itis, but I didn't fall asleep. I, like, literally, 
I've been in my I've been sitting on my futon in my living room because I don't have a TV in my room. I've just been like on my phone swiping on like you know, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> like it's so hard for me to go to sleep. That's the air going off right now because it's kind of hot in here. Now it's about to be cold. Where was I? I feel like I got totally off topic. I was going somewhere. <clears throat> Oh, friends, yeah, friends. So I tend to be in my own world. I tend to be in my own bubble. A lot of times I do spend a lot of my time at home. That's one thing about being a YouTuber and being someone who does see, you know, in has YouTube as a career, I suppose you could say, is that it takes up a lot of your time and a lot of that time is spent alone editing, filming, and eventually, because you have to remember that I'm also a reader, a psychic reader, tarot reader, astrologer, so even for my personal clients, like, I have to be on camera, like, you know, like, if I'm doing a one-on-one reading, like, sometimes my clients want to do Skype, excuse me, so after being on camera all day, eventually you just get tired of cameras and you just like I just shut the I just shut my when I'm tired and I'm like exhausted I just turn I just shut my laptop off which is good but it also prevents me from getting the rest of the work I need done but I guess it's good because I need to rest I'm all about working smarter not harder these days but okay so friends let me say on the topic of friends these are my late night thoughts, you guys. They're scattered. I'm a Mercury and Sagittarius. Sagittarius are very scattered. Mercury, by the way, rules our communication, our mind, how we think, how we process our thoughts, how so all, how also we communicate. Sagittarius are not the most organized people. They're not the most organized communicators or thinkers, all right? But boy, can we think and talk fast. So let's go back to friends. So here's the other thing. I live in Virginia, and even my, like, I grew up, was born and raised in Virginia, born and raised in Leesburg. So if you know anything about Leesburg, it's a bunch of, like, very snotty, snooty, mix between very, very rich people to very poor people. So, I kind of varied in the middle, middle to upper class is how I grew up, all right? So, but here's the thing, like, all my friends I grew up with in high school, even though I still live in the state that I grew up in, like, I don't keep in touch with any of them at all. I don't, and I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, I know we outgrow friends, but, like... I just feel like I don't have any friends out here. I don't have any friends in my apartment complex. And there's a lot of young, old, you know, mixed between, you know, different ages and, you know, stuff like that. People that live here. But I just feel like I'm stuck in my own world. And I feel like I need to step out of my world. That's one thing that is good about me having a part-time job outside of YouTube is that I get to step out of this world, my world. I love being in my world, but I just feel like I don't like being in my world alone sometimes, and we'll get into that in a second. But back to this part-time job thing. That's one thing I like about having a part-time job, aside from the side income, of course, but I like that it gives me a chance to step out of my world, my YouTube world all right and it also gives me a chance to meet people all right killing two birds with one stone which i don't like saying that because i don't like the thought of killing birds period so we need to figure out a better analogy when it comes to that let me know a better analogy in the comment section below but you get the point right (sighs) yeah so i feel like that's one good reason for part a part-time job however I don't really like part-time jobs to be honest I like doing YouTube I like doing my readings and for the most part I am able to live off that thank God but sometimes in 
people often advise me to get a part-time job, you know, um, just for the benefits, aside, not even money-wise, you know, you'll meet people, you'll get out of the, how, the house, you know, you, you know, may even meet, you know, a lover or something like that, which we'll get into that in a second, you know, where it's just like, mm, I don't know. So, like, I just got out of a part-time job situation that was absolutely horrible. But I got it through a family friend, thank God. Actually, my uncle who just called me, who I'm surprised has not called me again. After calling me literally five minutes before me filming this video. But if he hasn't called me again, that means it's not important. So, maybe I'll call him tomorrow. I'll probably call him tomorrow. But back to what I was saying about the part-time job. Yeah, I got that one through a friend, but it was just horrible. Like, the employee, like, my, the co-workers were just very shady. It was a very negative environment, very low vibration. It was like a warehouse type of situation, so, which is good for me because I don't necessarily, like, interacting with the public, especially with this YouTube thing. Like, it's just very awkward. You know, because I actually do meet people who, who know me, like, in real life through my YouTube channel. So, that's also a little hump for me to get over when it comes to getting a part-time job as well. I'm like, mm, depends on what I'm doing and what context. Like, it's not a move for, like, a subscriber to see me in the Wendy's drive through window or something like that, which, no shade to Wendy's, you know, people who work at Wendy's or fast food at all, but I don't know. That's just an analogy. But I don't know. For now, I'm pretty, I'm doing pretty well when it comes to just, you know, living off YouTube and my readings, so... Which I'm going to talk about that really quickly as well. Paying bills. OMG. Let me talk about this really quickly. I live alone. And thankfully, I've learned to budget. I've learned to pay my bills on time and early. All right. As early as possible. So that I'm not stressing at the end of the month. Or not stressing as much at the end of the month. But man, is it hard. Like paying everything on your own and this is actually you know a good segue into love all right sometimes I envy people in a relationship simply for the fact that they have that extra support now mind you not everyone in a love relationship is supportive of each other right like you know you can't always depend on you know your boyfriend or your girlfriend to you know help you in a pinch but that's the type of relationship I want, you know. I like, but, but here's the thing, but I like that I'm independent. I like that I'm self-reliant. Like, I like that I'm building these characteristics of myself. But my moon in Libra craves, like, a partner. Like, my moon in Libra craves someone, by, like, a sidekick sometimes, you know. And it's just hard to come to terms with that, accept that, that I have that need, but also accept that the reality of I can't force love. Like, you know, like love just kind of has to happen when it happens. And I don't know when it's going to happen, even though I'm a psychic. Like, you know, I can get readings on it, but it just has to happen when it's supposed to happen. So... And then, like, sometimes I wonder, like, why haven't I ever been in a relationship? Like, you know, like a serious relationship with a guy. And then I think, you know, well, first of all, there's this whole process of coming out. You know, I came out of the closet when I was 22. I think I was a sophomore in college. 27, so it's been five years. I've only been out of the closet for five years. Granted, when, when some boys come out of the closet, I mean, a boyfriend's waiting for them five steps out of the closet. Where is my water? I'm really thirsty. I need to actually get more water, y'all. Hold on.
Now that water is so delicious. It has cinnamon in it. I think it has like maybe two Palo Santo sticks, citrine stones, shungite stones, quasi chips, I think is what they're called. Mm, it's really good, y'all. I want some Jezebel root. Oh, MG. Like, sometimes I don't even need like juice. Or like, you know what I'm saying? A sweet maybe carbonated beverage or like I'm partial actually to like Arizona teas and stuff like that but you do you so let's get back on topic where was I love yeah so love um what was I talking about related to love oh like then sometimes I wonder like is there something wrong with me like but then I think the whole process of coming out of the closet, right? Well, I've only been out of the closet for five years. Yeah, sometimes guys, you know, come out of the closet, you know, five steps and they have a boyfriend. But I have to also have this thing where I don't compare myself to other people because I sometimes do that. And here's the other thing that I do as well. I guess this is a really honest late night. I don't even know if I'm going to post this video. But sometimes, like, I even compare my YouTube channel to other content creators. And sometimes it's even content creators who aren't even in my, like, niche. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you comparing yourself to them? But I feel like my content is so creative for, for the niche that I'm in. And it's so, like, I put so much out there. I'm just like, why am I not getting the views I feel like I should get? Why am I not getting the subscribers I feel like, you know, like, I should get... Why do I get so much hate when I do want to artistically express myself and be different from every other tarot reader? Why do I feel like I have to prove myself so much harder than everyone else in the astrology tarot reading niche? Is it just something in my mind that I feel like I have to do or is this a reality? Like I haven't figured that one out yet. But it all stems from me comparing myself to other people. So maybe that is the issue. Maybe it is me. This is something I also have to catch myself in when it comes to love and relationships too. Like, bitch, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, l l let me just be real with myself. Can I just be real with myself? I don't normally call myself the B word, but you know what I'm saying? This moment calls for it. Like, you can't compare yourself to that person and their love relationship. I'm a very unique individual, so I need an equally as unique individual who can handle me. Like, I'm a psychic reader, I'm an astrologer. You pretty much can't get anything past me. So what if God is crafting... The guy for me and me for him. And this whole time, I'm like impatient. And not understanding the process. Maybe I'm delaying the process. I don't know. But... Sometimes, honestly, I like being alone, though. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm just like, eh. I'm glad I'm alone, to be honest. Then I can imagine sometimes it, I can see myself saying, yeah, it would be like being in a relationship and saying, I'm glad I'm in a relationship. Like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I think love just happens when it's supposed to happen for you. I think success just happens when it's supposed to happen for you. The thing is, we don't know when, so we just literally have to keep moving forward. I don't know anything else to do. Keep moving forward, pray, do my magic, do my candles. <clears throat> and just keep my head up. That's all I've known to do for the past year of living here alone. <sighs> you 
which by the way, I've never talked about the circumstances of me actually living alone. I got kicked out of my house, which I actually am on the deed for, which I found interesting because I got into a verbal argument with my aunt who was bullying me at the time. That's a story time. But you know what? I was watching Choice TV. Do you guys watch Choice TV? And his, like, sister situation. And his sister situation reminded me. I need to blow my nose. It reminded me so much of my aunt in my relationship. Like, my, I'm, like, listening to his story. I'm, like, wow. My aunt was, like, wild. Like, a 47-year-old who just act like, like, acted like a 27, sometimes 17-year-old. So toxic, so glad I'm out of that situation. And it ended up working to my benefit. I got kicked out and I just went to my other aunt's house and pretty much lived there for a month. Saved up my money solely from YouTube, all right, in my readings. And got my own place, got this place. So I've seen God work in my favor before, all right? Like, God, God has had my back so many times. There was one time where, oh my God, you guys, this is a moment. I really wanted to go to college, and I didn't have the money to go to college. I even wrote Obama a letter talking about, I don't even know what I was talking about. My Mercury and Sagittarius and Moon and Libra was just chatting it up probably in that, that uh, I actually wrote, I think I wrote actually him a letter. I wonder if Obama actually wrote that letter or read that letter, but he sure did send me something back. He sent me, I don't know if he sent me a letter. I wish I still had it, had it. But he also sent me, like, a packet of, like, something for me to, like, look into for, like, intuition and, you know, um, extra, you know, ways to get some money for college. I thought that was cool. Would you do that, Trump? I'm not sure. I miss Obama. Do you miss Obama? Uh, uh, he was so amazing. I got to saw him. I got to see him twice in person, far away. But you know what? It's ugh, even those times were very moving and ethereal. So the first time I saw him was let me go blow my nose, y'all, because this isn't this is an important story. I feel like hold on, this is Obama. Okay, so the first time I saw Obama was, I actually don't remember where it was, but I remember it was like a family affair, and this is when I think he was still um, campaigning to be president, and I think we may have went to Detroit, I think he was speaking in Detroit, and it was like me, my uncle, my cousins, my aunt, like my extended cousin's family like it was like a really big thing we all traveled to Detroit and Obama was there speaking and we got pretty close to him like it was more so on the side and I just remember it being a really historic moment I think I was in high school at the time I don't remember what grade which by the way this is going to be an important piece of information to remember in the story I'm about to tell you the second time I saw him all right, which was, I saw him a little bit closer this time, but I was in high school the first time, so, you know, I got to see him, I just remember it being really historic, because he was, you know, the first potential black president, and the way he spoke was just very moving, and it compelled you, and it captivated you, and I just remember there were a bunch of people, like, you know, black, white, Latino, like, there was just so Asian, like, there were so many people, and it was just amazing, very fun, very amazing, very moving, I think I might have actually seen him three times, because I remember he may have came, was it Obama, or was it someone else, 
I don't remember, but okay, so the other time I remember him coming was he actually came to my high school. It's the second time I remember seeing him. But I may have seen him three times. I don't really remember. He came to Leesburg a lot. Remember, Leesburg is a very affluent area. So Trump also, I think pretty much, I think Trump came to my high school as well. So, yeah. Lots of rich whites. Black. Spanish. Indian people. All right. It's a very multicultural area, Leesburg. I grew up with white um, caretakers or white Caucasian. I guess is a better way of saying this. Um, my neighbors were my caretakers or my, what do you call it when they watch, when people watch your kids? Babysitters, I guess, but I really wasn't a baby, but yeah, they were like mad cool though. Their kid was a little bit bad. I remember Bradley was a little bit bad and it's funny because now she works at the, the clinic or something like that. So whenever like I go get like my test or like you know go get tested or usually get my physical or something like that then um i see her sometimes you know and she's like oh how are you and i'm sure she's all up in my tea like girl what you what's going on with you you know but that's yeah so like and then like I also had like my best I had in best friends who were Indian, black, white. It's very interesting upbringing I had. Both my neighbors were white. I was really cool with both of them. The other neighbor I had, I think we were a little bit more closer to. They weren't my caretakers. I think my mom trusted me more with the other uh, I forget their names, but they were really cool. The other Caucasian neighbors, I don't remember their names, but they were mad cool. They were really cool. I liked going over their house after school because it was me and, like, a couple other kids who were, like, I'm pretty much were all white, but it was, like, their family, but they were really cool. Like, I don't know. It didn't, I didn't, I never felt out of place. They always had video games to play. I remember we watched a lot of Rugrats, Nickelodeon. Sometimes they had board games. I think I would go over there and do my homework or read and stuff like that. Oh, they were, like, mad cool. And then the other neighbor, I had Charlie. Like, Charlie was lit. Charlie was lit. But my mom liked them, too. And then his name was Dale. And it's funny, we ended up seeing them later on. But they were cool, too. Charlie was a little bit more crazy and lit, though. Like, Charlie was definitely crazy, but fun. So, yeah, that's funny. I don't know why I just thought about that. But that's the kind of upbringing I had. I don't know what kind of upbringing you had. Like I said, I grew up in a very multicultural community. I've always grown up around different races of people um you know i have different races of people in my family as well um i'm used to seeing people of different races date due to you know my family like it's kind of normal to me to see white and black people together just asian and black people together like it's normal to me it's not like it's not abnormal to me because of how i grew up um, and I grew up in a very, but I grew up with a very traditional family, like, values and background on both sides. Like, I grew up, I was, I was grateful to grow up with great grandparents as well. Um, and I got to spend a lot of time with them. I, I was able to spend, you know, time with my grandparents. So, yeah, I had a very interesting upbringing. Literally, I've always been used to having friends. Like, I've never been the type of person to stick to just my race or, like... Like, actually, like, growing up, I never really fit in with, like, my, like, race of people. Or, you know how sometimes in schools there's, like, the urban, like, the urban, like, the 
I never I never fit in with those kids. Like I was more the popular kids, but the the kids who were like a little bit edgy and bad. Just a little bit. I mean I went to college, I wasn't that bad, but but I always had friends, always, who were like white, black, Asian, Indian. Like it's always been like that. Male, female. Always. Like since I was young. Middle school, you know, elementary school, college, like it's always been like that high school. No, how did how was your friend group growing up? Like what what was your upbringing like? What like and I remember growing up the thing to wear was Hollister and Abercrombie. Back then it was American Eagle. Oh, I can't see an American Eagle now, but I, I will wear something Hollister and Abercrombie every now and then. Even though I'm 27, okay, don't get it twisted. Still look young, all right? Um, that was, like, the thing back then. Yeah. I still had my Starbucks obsession back then. I wish I had a YouTube channel back then. Like, that would have been so fun to look back at. Child, I don't even know how I got on this topic. Lord have mercy. This video is about to be an hour long. Let me bring this video to a close. So, the point is... What is the point? I don't know what the point of this video is, to be honest with you. There is really no point to this video. I just felt like talking once again, and talking to someone who can't talk back. I like this moment of being able to regurgitate all my thoughts that I've been holding in because I know no one's going to care on Facebook if I were to post this on a freaking Facebook post or Instagram. So I figure why not just get on camera and talk. I, don't know, I hope this video gave you some entertainment, insight, clarity, maybe a word you need to hear, advice. Something I do want to get soon is a pet. I really am between a bird and a cat, but I think I'm just going to go with the cat. I'm just waiting for that right moment. <clears throat> But one thing I can't do is I just can't sit around and be sad about what I don't have. I need to be grateful, you know, like I'm trying to be for what I do have, you know. Even if it's not much right now. Maybe that's the point of this video. Be grateful for what you have, even if it's not much. Whether it's money, relationship, dream job. Your home, the car. I wish I had a new car. I like my car. It gets me from point A to point B. It's definitely not bad. It's a 2009. Alright. It's not too outdated, but if I had my way, I'd have a new car. And friends, and a boyfriend, a dog, and a cat. And a bird that all got together along. And I want some kids too. But I think I can wait. But I want at least one biological kid of my own. Oh, if you see that little light right there, it's my TV. But, you know, if I had my way right now. But we never get our way, do we? Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But let me get off of this camera. <laughs> Thank you for listening and watching to me ranting. I am actually tired now. Maybe it was a good thing I got to talk. It tired me out. I love you all. If you want a personal reading, definitely check out my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. I'm here for you, and I would love to read for you. You can also call me or text me at 703-791-9162. And 
Thank you all for spreading the word about me and my work, by the way. To those of you who do spread the word, and tell me that you spread the word when you get personal personal readings from me. Thank you for valuing me and my work. At the end of the day, I don't know who or where. Literally, think about that. I don't know who who or where I would be right now if it weren't for YouTube and you all. It's a moment. I'm going to cry. And I'm going to hold it together. I'm going to hold it together. Yeah. I love you. Peace, love, and light. Good morning, good night, good evening, whenever you're watching this video. Until our next late night chat.